All right, you guys, this is John, uh, Libro Fitness. We're gonna go over the new XL and all the functionalities, um, how to configure it, um, all the uh, main components of it, the attachments that come with it, uh, and the difference between the FTS2 Power Rack and now the new XL uh, that is basically you know a little wider instead of uh, having to have everything in the front, right? So, um, the biggest thing you guys that we did the configuration is obviously removing the functional trainer and putting it on the side. Uh, some people were concerned about, well, now it's gonna be too wide without, so we have the handles that will have different height adjustments. Um, this is still your two to one ratio, so you guys are still able to go and go into your you know, functional here at a two to one. Do that cable, now it has a wide feel uh, and you're able to get a better range of motion, better stretch on that pet, okay? Uh, it's out of the way from your power rack. Uh, this is the actual bench that is always included with the machine. It's our Bravo bench. It's a heavy, heavy duty, adjustable, flat, incline, decline, really nice bench. Okay, now moving into the Smith. The Smith is a six foot bar. It's 35 pounds, uh, 700, uh, it's 35 pounds as far as the, the weight, and 700 pound graded. That's an adjustment, move it out of the way. It also turns into your leg press. It's got your safeties, so you guys can do your squat, no problem. Okay, it's got your safety spot over right here. It also has your shock absorbers, but this prototype didn't have them in there. Uh, same thing with the laser cut, didn't have them in there, but we'll have them uh, with all the future production, so it's easier to adjust up and down. Now, to turn it into a power rack. Cool. You guys are able to turn it here. Get the heights. If you need your spotters, grab your spotters. Right. These are your safety spotters. Heavy duty. All right. In the back, you guys have your storage for the barbell. Turns into a power rack just like that. So you guys can do chest, back, whatever you guys need to do. Safety spotter right there, just in case we get to that failure point. Okay, all right. Easily removed, and then turn into a power system. So your jam arms, your jam arm system, they're always stored up. They have extra pins, one to lock it in place. The other two are to keep the stress off the wheels. Can you keep them up this way so you can easily remove them up and down? As long as you know that they're not in there, then we shouldn't be you know, doing pull-ups without the support of the three-quarter inch that basically give a little bit more support to the system to the wheels, easily go in to the other side. Now, you have enough support if you have a steel, uh, steel pin, giving it support instead of letting all the stress to the plastic uh, wheels, okay? Now, if we're gonna be using the jam arms, store it away. The cool thing about it, all the attachments are bullet pin, so it's easier to insert. You go right into the other side. Safety with all your attachments. Easily go in instead of having to fish or with a square. You have to, you know, aim from, aim back, all that stuff, right? If you guys want to move your jam arms up and down, there's two ways to do it. Okay, you guys can either a once you become efficient enough that you can move it this way, right? You have to grab it wide. But if it feels a little heavy, then you need to bring this down so it's easier, closer to that center of gravity. And you guys can make your adjustments on whatever you're gonna be using, right? Remove that safety pin. Bring it down to the desired one. Second safety pin right there, okay? Okay, now we have 
for deadlifts, whatever you need to do. You can also have this eye eyelids right here. Okay, if you have, for example, belt, chain, you're gonna be able to do a belted squat with it, right? You also have a belted squat fully down here. In the corner, there's a cable system that will run all the way down to that pulley, and then you're gonna be able to do a belted squat selecting your weight, okay? You have your mind, can be set up right or left for all of your mind. Exercises, right, on the mind, okay? So that is basically your power rack, Smith, your mind. Now into the attachments, okay? The attachments, now that we have an Excel, we do not have to share our power rack and do too many configurations. That is one of the good things about the Excel and the monster cage. Now you can just leave it this way. You don't have to, you know, think out your workout too much. If I want to go into a row, Grab my platform, set it about 24 inches. Standard benches are about 20 inches height. Set it right there. Boom. Bring the trolley down. Get that shoulder height that you need. Keep in mind, this is a two to one ratio, so you're only gonna be feeling about half of the stack. The pin can be either do in the inside or on the outside, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to go inside the cage. We'll throw in a little extra numbers right there so you guys have double, double uh, denomination as far as the weights, okay? Yep. Now I can go into a row, two to one ratio. 120 feel when you have the full stack. The other thing you guys can do if you're all maxed out, if you are all maxed out, then there's this point right here that you guys are able to add. That's 40 pounds, 20 kg, 44 to be exact. Another one right here, boom. I just threw another 80 pounds. If you have smaller diameter plates, you can throw about 200 pounds with the uh, 55 pound rubber coated that we have. Okay. Now you have enough weight to go into your rows. Okay. Get a little bit more of a max effort on it. Now to turn it into leg press, we'll go over that in a minute. Let's store the jam arms up. Easy to move out of the way. I usually like to lock it at that position right there. Since I'm not gonna be hanging from it, just bring them up, leave them the way they are. Remember, this is your machine, so the only reason we have extra safeties is because we run a group training model. Many people go through it. The last thing I want is they hang, they start doing pull-ups, they break one of the wheels because it's not designed for that unless it has the support steel picks. Bring it up, stays right there. Can you do it? Yes, you can. It's rated right about 300 pounds, but 300 pounds aggressive over time, it's gonna start to break a little bit, okay? So, once it's there, turn it into a leg press. Grab a platform. Boom, slide it on. Pull the pin and hold it in place. Locks in place right there. Good. I can have weight. Right. Left. Down here. Safety. Safeties. Actually, left it a little high. My legs get as close in as possible. Line up your hips to the rods for better experience. Lift, tilt, right? We need to control that tilt, and then we got a full functional leg press, vertical leg press with the safeties. We continue, bring it all the way down. Full range of motion right here, tilt forward, 
catch the hook. All right, next one. Lap pull down. Grab my lap pull down. Two more ratio. Set it. Right there. Good. I'm gonna grab my lap pull down. Comes with the lap pull down attachment. Right here. Good. Adjust your weight. This is a one to one ratio, so now it's gonna feel heavy. Anchor down, boom, pull down. Ha! Gains. All right, last thing for the attachment, we have our dip bar. Our dip bar requires you guys to use a safety pin. Safety pin can also be utilized to give you a little more support on here. You guys can slide it in, lock some place. Same thing on the rowing station. Rowing station requires an extra pin as well. So you guys have about eight of these for the leg extension, all that stuff. Same thing on this side. Grabs. Gives a little more support to the platform so it's not moving left or right, okay? Uh, for the dip bar. The dip bar has to be mounted on the side of the rack. One, two, one inch holes are only in the front frame of the rack. They are not in the front. So this is where you guys can do your dips. Now, if you want it to have mounted in the front. These are easy to drill through with a step drill. The reason I say that, some people want to use the belted squat with the dips, so then I'm going to pick whatever hole it's going to be for me that I'm always going to use, and I'm just going to use a step drill to make it bigger, and now I have my designated area for my, my uh, dip bar whenever I want to do a belted dip, right? Other than that, you guys, this is our prototype. It's missing a few things that we're gonna have on the next batch. Laser numbers, it's gonna have the pulley system for the leg extension. That's the one thing that is not included with the, uh, the rack. So leg extensions are an additional add-on platform for the wall balls or add-ons. Uh, the boxing bracket is an add-on. There's a couple other things that we're gonna be doing. With the hip thruster, it's not gonna be, actually it will be a good configuration for this one. Same spacing as the FTS2 power rack. So it will be able to attach to this one just in case you guys wanna have that hip thruster, you know, for your hip thrust. The XL, the power rocks, all of them you guys can be configured at any height, any width. Standard height for right now is gonna be 90. Most people are putting this in their garages. So 90 seems to be the perfect, perfect height for everybody. The new width for this is gonna be 106 inches. It can get a little wider, or, but we can get it a little bit more narrow than that, okay? Um, special orders, if you guys need to do any, any, this is a standard color, black, black, flat, flat black, and red. That is the standard color that we always have. If you guys wanna change the whole color, we have about 25 different colors you guys can do. We do powder coating. It's gonna extend the lead time up to 90 days, but it'll have your look and feel. Uh, other than that, you guys, we're excited about having this new piece. If you guys have any questions, you guys can always uh, reach out to me. Uh, the phone number that will be on the link, and uh, we'll see you guys on the other side. Thank you.